In the first part of this project, we have to establish a horizon line and then place our vanishing point. In this next step, I'm going to draw a box. You want to make sure to keep your lines parallel to one another when you draw the box. And then you'll see that I'm going to go over my lines a couple of times. That is to darken the box and make it come forward in space. You're then going to take your ruler and you're going to line it up with every corner and draw a soft line to the vanishing point. Once you have your lines like this, then you're going to try to match the front top line and keep, make a parallel line to define the back edge of the box. Sometimes it helps to place your ruler in an, an incorrect way like this, so that then you can adjust it to make it parallel to the front line. And then you're going to want to darken the outside edges of your box. I've changed the color of my pencil to red so that you can see the line that defines the inside of the box. You take the top and the side line to the intersection point and that gives you, that defines the inside of the box. Then I'm just going to do exactly the same steps one more time, drawing a box and making sure to keep the lines parallel to one another. taking the corners to the vanishing point. Now keep in mind that the box, this box is going to look a little different than the first one because of its location. It is directly under the vanishing point, and so we will only see the top and the front plane of the box. I'm switching colors to show you or to define the inside of the box going from the corner to the vanishing point, and then simply connecting the top point to the intersection. And the bottom right back of the box to the intersection point. You'll take your eraser and get rid of any lines that get in the way. Following the same system, I'm going to draw a rectangular box that goes a little bit above the horizon line and a little bit below the horizon line. I'm going to take all of the points to the vanishing point inside corner to the vanishing point and you're going to define the back edge of the box. In this case it's a rectangular shape. Connecting the back plane of the box We're going to turn this box into a bookshelf, and so I'm taking the ruler there and I am spacing out, in this case I'm doing it every one inch, I'm marking every one inch, 
on the front face of the box there. And I'm going to go to every marking and draw a line to the vanishing point. This will define every shelf. And then you can give sh every shelf like a little bit of width by simply lining up your ruler and making sure to keep the lines directly below your original line there and define and create a shelf. You're now drawing through and creating the front face of the shelf there. And then you're going to take every point on the right side of the rectangle and connect them to the vanishing point. darkening the lines to make the shelves stand out a little bit. Now we're going to work on stairs. You're going to create a triangular form. I'm keeping mine at about two inches high and two inches across. You're going to connect the corners to the vanishing point. Take your ruler and then divide it in even increments all the way um, up that edge. This is going to define the stairs for you. So these are just your guidelines. You're going to take this line all the way across. And then you're going to define the back edge of your stairs. Take your ruler and go from that intersection point to the vanishing point. You want to keep your lines fairly soft. and get rid of your construction lines. Then we're gonna leave that be for a little bit. We're gonna get more practice drawing uh, boxes. And once we get comfortable with that, then we'll come back to add the stairs. So now we're going to draw a box that is above the horizon line. And this box is definitely going to look very different. We're following the same steps and taking every point to the vanishing point, keeping those lines very soft, 
And now we're defining the shape of the box and keeping those lines parallel to one another. Then I switched colors there in order to draw in the inside plane of the box. making sure to darken the outside edges of the box so that the box can really come forward in space and also so that we don't get confused about what is the inside of the box. We're going to follow the same steps and draw another box that is above the horizon line. And then we're going to draw a box to the right there that is above the horizon line. You're going to want to make it long um, rectangular shape and we're going to work from a cube there. You're going to want to subdivide the box like that and do the same to the back. This is going to give you the points so that you can draw um, a circular shape here and keep it fairly even. And you're going to do the same to the back square. Then you're going to darken the front circle. Same thing to the back. And you're going to use your ruler to connect the bottom edges, still keeping it hitting that uh, vanishing point. And there you have a cylindrical shape. Get rid of some of the construction lines. And there you go. Now you're going to make, uh, we're going to work on the stairs again, and you're going to make vertical lines to make the steps. And darken the step lines. Darken the corner or the edge of every stair. And now we're going to add one more line. From this point on the stair, we're going to take that line in red and take it to the vanishing point. We're going to do the same thing to the back and then add a little bit of shading there just to give it a little bit of volume. The next step on this box, we're going to create a shadow shape. We're going to extend these lines out and then use this corner angle to give us the length of the shadow. Make sure that that line goes to the vanishing point. And we're going to add a little bit of value we're going to make a value step of 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so that gives it some 
volume. Now we're going to make a table. This is the top plane of the table. We're going to give the tabletop a little bit of width by dropping those lines down. This table is going to look a little bit different because it is slightly to the right and below the vanishing point. So now we're going to define the legs, making sure that the legs are even. We're going to use the construction line of a cube there in order to know where the legs end. Give the legs a little bit of volume. You're going to want to know where that back leg or the hind leg ends. And so by taking the line from the corner of the front leg to the vanishing point, then you'll see where that hind leg lands. And you will also notice that the hind leg is not in our line of sight. So now I'm drawing a little book that's sitting on top of the table there. And it's simply following the same system that we've been using all along. I'm going to add a rug underneath the table there, making sure that all of my lines go to the vanishing point. In the last part of this exercise, we're going to draw a chair. We're going to start the construction of the chair based on that box. We're going to use the box to help define where the seat will go and where the legs are. And then we're simply going to extend the lines of that box in order to create the back of a chair. You're going to create some width to every line so that it looks maybe like a wooden chair. And then you're going to clean up any of your construction lines that are getting in the way. You're going to draw this line from the front corner there, and it's going to tell you exactly where that hind leg needs to land. 